Welcome to our webinar today from McDonald International Scholars Academy. 2021 already, that's really wild. We started out 2005, 2006 with our first uh, class, first cohort. We've come a long way since then, and now we're so far advanced that we can start to have these really great uh, alumni gatherings and webinars and other ways of getting back together and like I said to you who were on here before, it'd be so great to, <laughs> when we can travel again, we could get you all back here to St. Louis sometime to see, watch you and to be together and remember how we were together before. So today we're gonna to be talking about your experiences in particular, but in government and NGOs, all of you are somewhere in those kinds of settings now, taking leadership positions, uh, future leadership positions and working your way up. And so I wanna just start by saying, um, I'm going to ask each of you to say something, introduce yourself, take, you know, a minute or two to say, remind everybody who you are, because there'll be many new people here today, where you are now, what you studied, and kind of the career path that's brought you, that brought you to where you are today. And then we'll go back and talk more, some general issues about how the Academy has played a role in what you do. So why don't we start, I'll start with people on my screen at the CM, and I'll start with uh, um, Tia. Yeah, you're on first on the list here as well, I see that Angie had. So Tia, you wanna go first? Okay, well, thank you. Hi, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, my name is uh, Niu Putu Maitra Agastia. Some people call me Tia, some people call me Agas. I am from Indonesia. So I am currently in uh, Melbourne. I am doing my PhD in social work at the University of Melbourne, um, another partner university of the McDonald Academy, interestingly. Um, I am originally from Indonesia. I was a scholar um, uh, in 2007. I joined the Brown School of Social Work and then graduated with an MSW in 2009. Um, so I am now a full-time lecturer as well at the University of Indonesia. University of Indonesia, and I'm also a senior researcher at the Center for Child Protection and Wellbeing, uh, or PUSKAPA, in uh, UI as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Michael, you want to tell us about yourself? Well, I'm Michael, and uh, I'm from Singapore. I graduated in 2010 uh, with a uh, master's in social work. Uh, ever since my time in St. Louis, I've returned to Vietnam, uh, though I'm a Singaporean and started uh, an experiment called the Tea Talk Cafe. Uh, currently, the cafe is closed, but Tea Talk continues to offer uh, mental health services uh, to people in need. Uh, for your information, but I'm traveling, even though I'm based in Vietnam, I'm from Singapore, but I'm currently in St. Louis visiting my uh, daughter, who is also in Watch you. Nook, would you like to tell us about yourself? Hello, uh, so what uh, My name is Garawika Sawit Serani, or as um, I'm known to um, the academy as Nook, which is my nickname. Um, I graduated from WashU with uh, MSW and MBA dual degree, a very unique, wonderful experience. Um, currently, I'm a diplomat and in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Thailand. My position is in Berlin, Germany, as first secretary of protocol. Wow. Okay. And uh, Russell, would you like to tell us about yourself and your background? Uh, I'm Russell, I'm from Hong Kong, and now in uh, Richmond, Virginia, so two hour drive from DC. Um, so I admitted to Wall Street in 2007 in the economic department during the PhD program and graduate in 2012. Um, and then my first job in Canada and now my current job in uh, Federal Reserve as a senior economist. Okay. Okay, what an impressive lineup uh, reminds us, you know, that I spent some 13 years being director and Mary and I did all kinds of things between 2005, 2018, but you were from the very earlier, earliest uh, cohorts. And so when we see this kind of 
uh, turnout to people who have accomplished what you've already accomplished. It makes us feel very, very proud. So let me ask you some general questions and we'll go around. Um, we don't have to go in the same order necessarily, but I'd like to hear from each of you on these questions. So first of all, I want to ask you, you know, what as part of your McDonald Academy experience prepared you in some way for what you're doing today? If, if you can't think of anything, you can say that. But on the other hand, if there are some things that you do that maybe you do differently because of your Academy experiences, you know, we'd love to hear that. Silence, but I, I guess that, that it's not a easy question. So um, I, I think that the academy brought me a lot of different exposure to different people and different uh, occasions. So um, when I was in Wall Street, so I spent most of my time in, in my office and, and in the lab. <laughs> so it is good to have something else uh, to see. To, to Jim's party is always a big event uh, uh, and, and talk to different people. Um, and if, if I think one thing uh, I, I benefit a lot uh, from my time in, in Washu is, is maybe I, I, I actually learned a lot of things, um, not, not really academic, but um, uh, about how to manage life from, from pain actually. So, uh, so uh, pain was my mentor um, uh, during the academy program. And, and it, it was amazing. So um, I don't know if anyone know about Peng Wen. So Peng, he was the founding father of, of the economic department in Washu. So you see the current form of the department. It, it changed a little bit maybe since my time, but uh, it is uh, built up by Peng. So, uh, and Peng was the department chair at the same time, teaching classes, advising students, managing the department, running conference, uh, and also raising a beautiful family. So uh, he has, I, I learned a lot of organization trick from him, uh, doing all the tasks together, multitasking. Uh, I, I think that benefited me a lot, especially in my career. Well, for me, I, I kind of like summarize it into a few words. Uh, the first word that came to mind about my experience uh, with the Academy was uh, generosity. Uh, why I say that, you know, when I got the scholarship, uh, first it was a surprise, you know, uh, and then when I told my friends about it, everybody don't believe it. They say, you mean you got full scholarship and you're not bond, bound, bonded for, for anything? Is that, is that a catch? You know, I said, no, it's free. You know, they, they give freely. And nobody believed. I, I went back to Singapore, uh, my partner university, and I shared with the students and many of them raised their hand and asked, uh, so will you be bonded? I said, no, and, and nobody believed. And I, I think uh, that generosity is not just in the scholarship, but, but in the people we, we, we meet with and, and two of our favorite person. I mean, everyone of, uh, is great, but we cannot help but always say, you know, uh, like our parents of the academy that's sitting uh, in front of our screen right now. Uh, and that generosity of spirit uh, teaches me uh, to want to then be that same person to be generous to someone who do not have that resources. Uh, I was one uh, who will not have that resources to be able to have this education. So generosity is one big word. Uh, I'll just quickly just say the other two words so the rest can talk about. The other, the other two words I'd like to share is uh, embracing, you know, the, the whole idea of just embracing uh, different cultures, uh, different people from, and, and we're bringing a lot of uh, nationalities uh, into one small tight space. Uh, back in our time, we, we have a very intimate group of about 20, 25. I know the group have grown, you know, but, but that embracing uh, uh, spirit that we, we have with one another uh, was, was something I really enjoyed. And finally, the word I would, I would describe is uh, humility. Uh, see, at the academy, uh, we get to meet a lot of brilliant people uh, in our midst, as well as uh, those we were introduced to. And and, and all we see, and of course, uh, uh, the founder, uh, John McDonald himself, you know, a man of uh, uh, so much uh, credentials, uh, but he would humbly talk to my daughter, 
who was at nine years old. You know, there was no airs about it. And, and, and I think these are the three, three words that helped me to kind of like do the same to the people that I talked to and just loving them, being generous, uh, walk, walking humbly, uh, even though we may be McDonald's scholars, right? But we walk with, with a sense of uh, thankfulness and humility. So that's what I learned. Wow, that was really beautifully put, um, beautifully put. I wholeheartedly agree and what a wonderful setup. Yeah, um, for me, first of all, uh, after graduating the MBA MSW, um, it gave me a really sound education. First of all, to begin with, it's top notch education. Following graduation, um, before becoming a diplomat, I, I worked in both NGO, as well as in corporate before becoming a diplomat. And that's only possible because of the kind of education that I received from Wash U. And also because of the generosity uh, that the academy allowed me to do a dual degree. So it, it gave me a very, a very unique uh, CV and allowed me to work in, in a range of things and then finally come becoming a diplomat. And obviously, um, being a diplomat, of course, the the range of of experiences uh, through the academy, you know, the the cultures that uh, we were introduced to, uh, everything. Of course, it just naturally builds up into what I do. It frames uh, my mindset. I can't say you know one, two, three, but what I can say is that the whole experience of both getting the education from Wash U, as well as living in St. Louis, as well as being part of the Scholar Academy um, family, really, all of it builds together into this, this kind of path that just, it falls into place eventually. You know, slowly it falls into a very much a, a bigger picture. And again, you know, from, from what um, my, my, friends just talked about definitely the experiences of meeting various people you know the some of the things that we were able to do some of the people that we were able to meet would never have happened without the academy you know it's impossible it's just impossible so that whole experience is carried through and it frames our mindsets I think or at least it frames my mindset on how I see the world and how I approach how I approach people how I approach cultures and under having that little more understanding you know sometimes I have a recall of ah something from from when I was back in in St. Louis about something you know and then it gives me a sense of ah this um I understand this I I can I can relate to this you know and that's something that is only possible because of because of the academy and because of Wash U and because of St. Louis and because of the people in the academy. So all of that really, it just all comes together. And it, I would say they, they are all parts of a bigger path for our lives. It, it's just a foundation that gets laid down and then it just, everything happens in its own time. But definitely it's the best start that um, I could ever imagine. You know, I would never have thought how how wonderfully everything turned out. <laughs> it's just when I started being a scholar, I didn't, I of course very excited to be have, uh, to get a wonderful education. And of course, you know, the, the academy is very generous, but even that, you know, given over a decade after that, um, it everything just falls into place even more. That's, I think that's the beauty of all of it. And, I think that's a shared experience of, of all of us in, in a certain level is that it falls into place. Everything just builds up to where we, we, we go in the future or where we have now come. <laughs> so yes, definitely everything about the experience has, has laid the foundation of, of who I can be currently and what I can do. It's a very unique um, experience. So to that, I'm going to Turn it over to Tia. Thank you so much. Um, I mean, like I have to agree to everything that Russell have said, Michael and Anouk have also shared. Um, all resonates to me. I think a few things uh, for my from my own experience is that yes, first the education. I'm um, um, if probably if I didn't go to one of the best social work school in the world, um, I wouldn't really 
learn so much about the profession uh, and have fallen more deeply in love with the profession that I decided to 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 take my career in that path. So, um, so that is first. I mean, like the the experience, the learning experience, and then meeting with. Uh, the professors, um, I have to mention Professor Michael Sheridan, for example, as my um, advisor, and then meeting Professor Sheridan and other professors, and then meeting my, my friends um, at Brown School, and then the practicum experience, and then the working experience afterwards. That really um, enriched me and really just fill a, um, a lot of my knowledge and skills and understanding about the profession of social work. And then as it is now still um, growing in Indonesia, I really felt that all that I gained from my experience doing my master's degree there um, um, was the, the best foundation that I could get. Um, and then second, I think Jim was asking what would be different. I think it all comes also from my experience of interactions with uh, the scholars and the academy is that from a, from a very early age when I was just trying to build my career, I think the academy again um, have shown me how important it is to um, know different perspectives because we get to meet to, with a lot of different scholars um, and mentors from different disciplines. I think it's just lay out there that you need to really know what other people are doing and then you need to really know what other people are thinking and then that's just a foundation of now I'm working in the gov with the government as well as with different uh, parts of uh, communities and having understanding that needs collaboration. There has to be collaborations. There has to be discussions. Um, and I think that's where it comes from. I think it comes from the academy. I think uh, like very simple, like the way that I work now when you get into a room and I could just being very confident of just like introducing myself to people, putting myself out there. I think I learned it from the parties at the McDonald's Academy, like the dinners we have. How do you, um, like Michael said, humbly uh, introduce yourself to others and how other professors have just humbly discussed things with us and then openly, um, yeah, to have discussion and then um, uh, trying to understand uh, what others are thinking, their perspective. So. That's the, the number two thing I think from the academy that I also received. Um, so just uh, collaboration, fostering collaboration, and then having the confidence to um, start dialogues and understanding the need for collaboration. Thank you. Great. I mean, that actually uh, tells us a lot. Uh, I mean, we're still always learning how to make this uh, enterprise better. Um, I think we might have in our midst here, the scholar who first asked me the question, <clears throat> um, when we come into the McDonald Academy, are we just a McDonald's Academy scholar when we're here or are we McDonald Academy for life? Uh, mm -hmm. McDonald Academy scholar for life. I think that was you, Nock. And uh, <laughs> if it was you or not, you should take credit for it. But anyway, <laughs> it's a very good question. And it led to one of our mantras. You know, We try to create McDonald Academy scholars for life. And one of the things that that means is that we love to see people stay in touch and build networks and things. And I see one of the questions we have here comes from Ping Wang is asking about, have you been in touch with others? Have you had any opportunities in professional circles to take advantage of the fact that you're part of this network of McDonald Academy Scholars for Life? Any personal stories or just one or two of you might have something that'd be great. I can start probably just so that Michael Russell the first. Um, Yes, uh, one of the things that I've actually take advantage is uh, when I am um, thinking of going back to school um, to pursue my PhD, um, I use a lot of the network I got uh, from um, the Brown School community, from Michael Sheridan, for example, and then getting in touch with some other professors that I've uh, met. Um, uh, when I was at Brown School and then from them to be uh, knowing, uh, get to know other professors as well as other PhD students so that getting a lot of feedback of like, how is it studying in the US field? How is it studying in the in Singapore field? So um, through that network, I was able to uh, connect with professors in Hong Kong, professors in Singapore from the partner universities that McDonnell University have. Um, so I guess that would be one like experience professionally um, that um, I have gained. 
Um, and then uh, I think uh, other than that, um, it's not professionals, but I am still in touch with a lot of my uh, McDonald um, Academy scholars. Um, and I think it's just wonderful. I mean, like we haven't really been doing anything professionally, but I think just having a friend that is just a text away um, or a, just a Facebook message away from other parts of the country is also very important as you build your um, career you need that you need that network as well uh, informal network but they're very uh, minded um, of your career and very supportive of what you're doing maybe i'll share a little bit uh, not so much in the way how i see it advance my career but uh, beyond career i think the mcdonald network is is a network of friends and families uh, for life and so personally you know i I keep in touch with, with people from my cohort, and I, I remember Xu Jing, and and uh, we continue to talk, and uh, you know, and then uh, I remember some of my friends like Wei Chen, and uh, she was in Michigan, and and my daughter went to study at Calvin College in Michigan, and we met up, and how she was helpful, and and all of that, and so so it's not just. Uh, the career part of it but when we do know and as we move on in our career like we know now not is in germany and and is there anything that we can connect you know i, I think it just provide that friendship it's, it's not just a professional work and and i think that's what uh all the activities uh the the six flags that we go to right and uh, the picnics that we had of course the the former one like the dc and the new york trip uh, but it was it was the six flag the, the party the sitting around uh, chit chatting that 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 lives are, are cultivated and friendships are, are bonded for life. So uh, I think professionally, um, may, maybe like Michael say, maybe it more about um something deep um personal um professionally it, it may be some network like uh, I know Peng I can tell people I know him, <laughs> and it it got some benefit uh sometime uh, <laughs> if you talk to. But uh, I, I think yeah, like like Michael and, and T T S say uh, the the the, the it more more like uh expanding your, your network and then you, you talk to people from different background it and which your life experience so uh when when uh, so when when I came back to Hong Kong not not this year not last year but several years ago so I so I I, I have some um catch up with uh the people I I know back in what you like like Peter, like Albert Yip, so which is uh, not the scholar, but uh, more the expanded network uh, through the academy. And, and one of the donor, uh, Professor To, um, I, I, I think um, he is, we, we still have some communication occasionally through email. So uh, in the Chinese New Year, so we, we, we exchange uh, to each other. Uh, he, he is very nice, uh, uh, and, and even though um, um, I, I graduated many years later, so I, I think it, it go through the network, so it it, uh, it enriched my life a lot, so I think it, it will help definitely, I'm pretty sure, in the end. Yes. Um, so I think I was um, the person who proposed that question, or some type of that question frame, mind frame, uh, mindset about, so what what happens when we graduate, um, how are, you know, and one of the things is because I really felt so connected and um, I just felt like we, we can't let this network go, you know, it was just, it was too, it was too sh soon, too short a time and I felt that um, I, I, I was hoping that there was a way that we will be bonded for a longer time. And I'm so happy that that's how it really did turn out to be. Um, and that everybody, I haven't been a really good alum. <laughs> I haven't participated so much, but I um, but I know all the time that um, this is the kind of resource and network that I'm ready to, to contribute to when I can. And that everybody can call on to me if I could be any help or any use to anyone. I'm very happy to to speak to to email with or anything um, to anybody who who says to me I'm a scholar I'm a, you know just anything you can just let me know and um, I also see that in the reverse side of things is I know that the network is there and when I need it I know I can email some you know <laughs> Angie or 
or even gym and just say like, okay, I have this issue or I have this need. Can you connect me with somebody? You know, I know it's there and our careers for me, you know, yes, it's been 10 years, but still, it's still in the beginning <laughs> for, for a, a job in government. It's, it's really a long-term thing. <laughs> so for me, I, I, I still see myself as, as, you know, in the beginning of my career, but I know that this is the kind of network that it, it gets, um, it, it's, it's there for us when we need it. And, and I'm also there for everyone at the academy if anybody needs me. So I know that's my part to, to you and to my commitment to the academy for sure. So if there's anything, anytime, I'm here. And, um, and I hope that I, I, can, I can be of use to, you know, I, I was connected, uh, well, this isn't yet professionally, but uh, recently, um, Angie connected me to Poom, which is one of the Thai scholars. Um, so that's, I look forward to cultivating that relationship as well. And if he needs me, I'm here. <laughs> so that's the thing. And I don't know if that answers the question yet, um, but I see that this is a network that can and will be utilized professionally as well as personally already personally, of course, you know, we've made so many friends through the academy um, that it's that's so obvious. Um, professionally, I think it takes time when when things and I go back to what I said earlier, I guess that things fall into place in its own time, you know, it's the, the foundation is laid. Yeah. Great. No, these really thoughtful and uh... You know, uh, answers that make us grateful that we were a part of the academy and watched all of you come through. Now, you know, one of the things we're always touting in the academy, um, it, you probably have these lines memorized by now, even though it's years ago, but one of the things we really wanted you to do is meet people and ideas you wouldn't meet otherwise and be together <clears throat> with people that uh, you probably wouldn't run into it had you not been in the academy. And back when you were in the academy, actually, it was a lot easier in the world. I mean, we had better relations. I mean, right now we have a lot of very tense relations between countries that we didn't have 15 years ago. We didn't have 10 or even five years ago. And it's a real source of concern, obviously. So I wanted to turn to a little bit more serious uh, topic here and ask you, so when you were in the academy and you met some people and maybe you heard some things that you couldn't believe that they said that, and maybe you didn't like some of those ideas, or didn't even like some of the people that talked about first until you got to know them. So there's maybe a growth experience, but has that continued to be a, a way to help you when you meet people from other societies and different political ori orientations today, because we're in a different world than when you were with us. So anything you could tell us about that and uh, advice you could give us about how to prepare today's scholars better for that, we'd love to hear. I'm saying wow because that's um, a really difficult question. I think. Well, you're a diplomat, all... so we expect. Yeah, it. especially hard, <laughs> or 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 not, depending on how we see things. I guess. Um, <laughs> um, yes, definitely. Uh, having met with different people from various parts of the world, and also not only just different cultures, but also different um, different majors in in studies. That's also another thing um, that you know I wouldn't have mingled with you know uh, people who were doing doctorates in chemistry or something like this if I was in in just going through school without the academy I wouldn't be reaching out into different branches of of studies so that's also another part and I think that brings um, then about the tensions you know culturally or between countries um, I think. Yeah, that, that definitely having that experience of being able to speak somewhat, speak your mind in a polite and kind and understanding way with an open mind, that's, that will always work. Um, no matter how much tensions there may be, I think that that basic um, way of communication, which it just gets trained into you when you're in the academy because we mingle we meet and sometimes there will be somebody who says something that makes you go like mm, I don't know how to go forward with this you know like it, it just surprises you a little bit because you never see things that way before or sometimes you will be in a room with scholars from different countries who 
you never thought their countries had any, you know, beef on each other. <laughs> And then something kind of pops up a little bit, you know, somebody brings up a, a topic that isn't really pleasant for the other person or something, but that's, that's life. And, um, and then it teaches you, this is okay. It's okay to have differences of opinions, differences of experiences, and still be friends and still be able to work together, still be able to talk together. And I remember, I think we had um, uh, some presentations and I think somebody brought up a very tense issue about the Three Gorges Dam and back at that time that was a, um, a big thing I don't remember who I don't remember the whole context yet or maybe maybe it's you know, I don't think it's one of the panelists here but I don't remember actually but I do remember that it, it was a moment where we kind of there was a little bit of tension I think that was Chung Ji, and you you had a question for him after his yeah, presentation. Yeah, and then we had a little exchange of ideas and opinions, and you know, how would you think? And that that's you know, so the tensions. It's not bad to have tensions. All the you know, it's not always a negative thing. Sometimes it just means that you're coming from different experiences and different angles, and then going through the academy means you know how to talk about it. You know how to 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 be open minded to speak politely and be kind and ready to understand. And I think that now and then is the same. So it, it, it's transferable. So that would be my two, two cents on that. Um, yeah. Okay, great, thanks. I see that uh, Zian has a question. Yeah, I just want to you... call. Oh, uh, so my name is Zian. Uh, I am the very first cohort of McDonald Academy scholars. Um, I. I just I have a comment on this, uh, especially right after Knott's comment. Um, uh, at the very beginning uh, of our time in the uh, McDonald Academy, I remember one of the like very first parties in our academy uh, apartment, um, and Vikram uh, from India, uh, also a scholar, uh, MBA. I remember um, asked me, "What do you think about Taiwan?" And then um, so I was fresh out of China. So Taiwan was a sensitive uh, question to me. Um, before I had a, a chance to formulate my answer, Nock jumped in and asked, what do you think about uh, um, Kashmir? So um, you know, that completely opened my eye to um, you know, not only that it took away the tension in a, a friendly way, but also it reminded, I think it reminded everybody that every uh, country has their own problem and we should be mindful, respective of, um, of the other people's problem. So I, I, uh, it, it, in, the, in the world today, in the, uh, for, with unfortunate tensions, um, I think McDonald Academy, um, at least for us, um, planted seeds in all of the scholars at least um, um, for you know, peace in, in, in the world and hopefully we, uh, we are um, um, educated to be the ambassadors of peace, um, you know, once we go out in the world, in our respective countries. Great. I, I wasn't there for that interchange, but that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a classic. That's great. <clears throat> Other comments from our panelists here about how you solve these problems and what you learned out of the academy in order to get there? I, I think uh, for economy, so it, it might be uh, our everyday life. So we, we, we like to fight each other. So uh, uh, and I, I think when 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 someone says something is hard to believe or, 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 or crazy, I think usually our first response as an economist will say, uh, prove it. How do you know that? Uh, so uh, that just means, okay, uh, provide uh, what is your basis of your belief? What is the evidence? What is your sources? And we, we, we try to source out the, the disagreement. And in the end, we may be, maybe eventually we still agree to disagree, but at least we agree on something. Um, and I, I think the, the principle of communication is try to understand each other. So it, uh, we, we try to give the best benefit of doubt, uh, try to understand what they are saying rather than proving other people wrong. So uh, it, it's something sometimes more about connection than correction. So uh, to build up the atmosphere uh, for for mutual understanding. So um, it's it, it, it's my experience how to handle some some conflicts. Uh, yeah. 
I think for me, we all bring with us our different lenses. You know, some of us put on a sunglass with a pink color uh, stain. Uh, and, and being in academy, you know, we, we come from all walks of life, different colors, different languages. Uh, and in my experience is uh, I like to eat my food using my spoon, right? But in an America culture, you eat with a fork. And so we had a discussion. I can't remember with who, like, should you eat with spoon or fork? But, and, and yeah, I also use chopsticks too, you know? And this is just, just perspective. And so what is, what, and, and I like to drink my soup with the, with the bowl out like that and drink. And so I sometimes, what I do now, I mean, this is on a very personal level, but if we bring it into, the, into a bigger level, it's like, I give people the freedom to say if they want to drink with the bowl on their hand and bring it up, that doesn't offend me. Or, or knowing that maybe, you know, where they are coming from, it is appropriate to, to eat with the spoon, to, to say, hey, you know, don't worry, I might use the fork, please use the spoon. And, and, and learning to take that perspective and respecting each other. And maybe together we can find new ways how we can go about uh, solving problems. So that's uh, how I see uh, in terms of uh, negotiating some of these conflict issues, because we all have a position and they're not necessarily wrong. Yeah? But we may be blinded to, to the other's perspective. And, and I think we need to open their eyes to see that as well as being to see theirs too. Um, I don't have um, a lot to add. I mean, I think everyone has um, pretty much said what I wanted to say. Um, maybe again, just to underline um, I think one one of also the things that I wanted to uh, provide is that actually the safe space to actually have that conversations uh, I think sometimes um, when we already work and then uh, with many things happening around the world or even in our countries there aren't also that space where you could just meet and then uh, not with high tension but like just Michael said that just trying to sit down and then just having this informal conversations that actually opens up people's perspectives of others of their position and then like Russell said but still again starting to bringing out the evidence and then the positions you have so I think um, I've also learned from the McDonald Academy that there needs to be a space for that as well and I'm hoping that I will be able to provide that space I think where I'm working or where I am with to then uh, just opening that space for people to come in and then kind of start talking. Um, so that's probably one thing that I wanted to add. Uh, I think the Academy really provided that safe space for all of us to, to start knowing, uh, getting to know others' perspectives. So these things we're talking about uh, apply to Americans as much as anybody. So uh, you've taught us an awful lot as well as we engage in these. So uh, we, as much as anybody, or maybe more, have a lot of things to learn in this respect. I have another question here from another McDonald Academy ambassador, namely Michael Sherrod, and he, he's interested, he, he's a policy guy, so he wants to know just straight out, how do you make the Academy more effective? Okay, well, I, uh, it's good to see everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm delighted to, to, uh, to be here. There's construction behind me. I hope it's not coming through my microphone. Oh, it's good to see you. I, I was just wondering, you know, I, I, I agree that McDonald Academy has been just wonderful and very effective. And, and the three of you are, are great examples of that. Um, but going forward, I just asking the question, well, how can the McDonald Academy become even more effective? Do you have uh, ideas about how we can continue to do, do this great work with with great people like yourselves and 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 become even maybe even a little better than than we are i i i think it's a great question so i want to circle back to jim so uh, uh when, when you managing the academy so what is the major challenge you have in order to developing the community so um maybe from and I, i'm just wondering from the other angle so and then we, we can maybe provide our perspective too hmm. Yeah, well, it's partly an answer to Michael's question as well. Um, a lot of times when we go, when we went out and we formed relationships, you know, be it with uh, National University of Singapore, Chinese University, Chula Longhorn, you name it, uh, University of Indonesia, I would only half jokingly tell people there, you know, dealing with you guys is easy. 
dealing with the academy scholars is easy. What's difficult is how to organize things at our own home institution so that this has a home and has an institutional culture, a change in institutional culture at Washington University. And Washington University is one of the most accepting and open places for change, but it still is an institution that has its own inertia. So I think one of the biggest issues here in a lot of ways is how to transform institutional culture of whatever institution you're in. Every institution has its own culture. It's not aware of it a lot of times, and it can be very enhancing, but it can also be very detrimental. So I guess the biggest challenge I think I had uh, thinking about these kinds of things, Russell, is how to, and, and actually, first of all, I have to give credit to Mark Wright, but about 80% of the good ideas we ever had, <laughs> sometimes they came out of my mouth, but Mark put them in my ear first. <laughs> but one of the things he said at the outset was, we're going to have ambassadors. We need to have buy-in. We need to have commitment from the leaders at Washington University, the powerful people we have in the institution, and get them excited. Then the institution will go along. And that's where the ambassador system came along. So we have people like Michael Ping Wong uh, to do these kinds of, uh, to be part of the academy and for the academy, you know, to really have a, a institutional, a cultural institutional changing possibility for that very reason. I think that's probably the thing that we just constantly have to continue to work on as well. What do you think about Michael's question? You want to I, answer, I, I, Russell? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I totally agree. So, uh, I, I think uh, maybe James uh, pointed out maybe good to have an ambassador system with with uh, with the with the scholar, and then on top of it, there will be maybe James or, or, or Mark or maybe uh, Kurt right now. Um, I, I think it's also one great trick I, I learned from Pen is about uh, finding the right people to do the right stuff. So it's sometimes about the delegation, but also sometimes about, okay, what are the resources uh, we can put in place? So after we get the right guy, so then delegate, so maybe give them power, uh, resources, and, and degree of freedom. Um, I, I, I don't know, but maybe this might be run one direction. So it, it has been more than 10 years uh, for the academy. So we have a... Uh, Maybe we have we, we have amazing alumni network. So there might be something uh, from the bottom up. Uh, maybe I'm just wondering, uh, maybe some alumni have, have their own idea in their event. So um, maybe more decentralized, uh, more dedication, maybe uh, help to, to, to make the, uh, the network more cohesion. Um, just one thought uh, when it comes to my mind when James mentioned. Hmm. Smart idea. What else? I have few. I have. I really like Professor Shredden's question. It's actually a question that I've had for myself for a very long time. Um, knowing that there aren't, there hasn't been a lot of Indonesian scholars coming into uh, into WashU and into the academy. Um, I think um, I think it's time now that it's not only about the ambassadors, but I think it's time now, like you've already mentioned, Jim, that you do have now alumni in very good positions uh, that represent um, certain countries, represent certain government, uh, represent uh, organizations where they are. And I think it's about time that we kind of make a breakthrough. Um, I mean, like personally, I think I'm ready to be introducing um, the McDonnell Academy uh, to UE uh, students and to UE uh, professions, uh, professors and with the ambassador, but as well as me, um, I'm willing, I think, and hopefully we get into that. I mean, like, so there's already like in the bureaucracy side, um, we have to think about that now, uh, especially in Indonesia and, and then in the, in the higher, um, education system. So we have the, the policy is already out there. So it's about uh, the person who are willing to go and do it. Um, and there's a lot of doors to knock, of course, um, if it comes to um, in Indonesia, but then I think it has to go through three channels, like it's through the government. So I think one of the weakness, well, not weakness, but one of the things that I don't see um, a lot of the McDonald have gone through is then going into the government and in countries like Indonesia, the government do have, um, they do have um, key, they hold key roles now. Um, so going into government officials, uh, agencies related to education, related to industry, 
um, that's one thing that we need to start working on uh, in terms of making how to have McDonald's Academy um, to be known as well as to be have being more uh, having more impact, I think. So through the government and then to, of course, through the partner universities, because um, again, the relationship is already there. So we just need someone to start working on that, where you will get students coming in as well as professors starting talking about uh, collaborations and research and and grants. And then the third one is still through, of course, non-government um, organizations as well. So it could be civil society, but it also could be business. And I understand that I think McDonald's already have that relationships with some businesses in, uh, in all of the countries. Um, so I guess I think it's about time that you probably could start emailing us and then just, okay, you got to do something for us. And I think, I think, I think each of us um, are willing, are willing um, to do that. And then just through our own uh, channels and like, um, yeah, where we are now in our career, I think uh, we are ready to actually, again, to recruit more um, young scholars that are able to then bring more impact as well as bringing other professions um, and professionals um, into something more um, tangible like grants or collaborations. I have an idea. I mean, recently I, I participated in the mentoring program at uh, the McDonald Academy and I thought that was uh, fantastic. Uh, I happened to be in town and so I say I want to be there, you know. And so I was there and I, I love just interacting with the, the, the younger scholars. They were asking me a lot of questions. And many of the questions wasn't so much uh, about uh, academia. You know, it's about uh, life. They, uh, they asked, uh, and because I, I'm trained in social work, I remember one of, one of the scholars, I can't remember her name, but she said, oh, it'd be so good if you can come and teach us how to uh, manage our mental health better. But, but that's not the point. My point is maybe, you know, we can encourage more uh, networking kind of platforms where we can have it maybe monthly or maybe quarterly. When people just come online like this, but instead of uh, just four of us, five of us doing all the talk, uh, we just break into smaller groups and say, hey, you know, uh, maybe for this month, we focus on these three topics. Show up if you want and... Uh, join a group say michael might be that facilitator and you can ask him all kinds of questions like we did for the mentoring and because people are, are now at different places it's hard to bring everybody physically together and so that that will be something i look forward to because that that is where we can really uh, be at the person to person level and when we talk about uh, governance, whether is it uh, uh, embassies, and when I was working, not working with, but when I was talking to an ambassador in Singapore, and, and he emphasized the people to people connection. And I think the McDonald's scholars uh, can be more effective in that sense, and we, we, we cultivate more of that rather than leaving it just to the individual like us who, because I happen to know Taya, so I write her personally and check on her life, you know. Uh, I do know Ngoc, but I didn't really get to know you very well, you know. But if there's opportunity for, for more uh, uh, informal, formal kind of network, and so, oh, now I know Ngoc is there, so I'm going, in case I need anything about German, me and I can contact her, you know. So, so this kind of uh, a, a more personal, but uh, giving everybody a chance to talk, uh, not just us, will probably be, be helpful. So I hate to break in here, but we're gonna have to take a station break, which doesn't mean you have to go away. But what it does mean, we've come to the end of the hour that we've advertised for the webinar. Somebody, if some of the people who are listening in or some of you have to go off to something else, you should feel free to do that. But just wanna say for Mary and me, this this is, Spectacular meeting. It's a nostalgic meeting. Yeah. See all of you. Say something to them too. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, uh, to see your faces <laughs> and to hear a little bit about how you've been synthesizing and e evolving, uh, synthesizing your academy experiences into your lives now and evolving more. I mean, it, it's just wonderful. I wish I could see you all in person. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a real treat. Yeah, we would love that.